Hi guys, I thought I would do a dissection of a flower for the sake of our online learning. And we've learned a couple things already that I wanted to kind of review back. Um, we've learned that, first of all, the angiosperms are our flowering plants, which we're going to look at two flowering plants today. We've also learned that these angiosperms can be divided into monocots and dicots. So looking at this leaf, you can see probably better on the underside that this is a monocot because its veins are parallel. It's also a monocot because if I take this like this, you can see that its flower parts are in threes. So this is Ashulomeria, and it's kind of cool as a flower because its sepals, which the job of a sepal is kind of to protect the flower, actually look like they're part of the flower. So if you look at it, these guys are three of them, and they are sepals. So I'm going to take them off. And um, then the inside part is actually the flower. And again, it's in threes. Um, what I wanted to show us is some of the male and the female parts. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the petals now. And the purpose of a petal is to attract pollinators to come and help reproduce here. And this flower has both male and female parts. And uh, what just fell off, actually, I'm going to try and bring it closer to the camera. You can kind of see that this is actually the male portion of this flower. The top part is the anther, and the stick here is the stamen, or the whole thing is the stamen. And um, so stamen and uh, anther, and the anther is where the pollen is. Oops, sorry, getting it out of the view. So anther is where the pollen is, and inside the pollen is where the sperm are. And you can see that the we've got all these anthers right, on the outside with, uh, as the stamen. And then we have the female portion, which is kind of here in the middle, and you can see she has the top, which is a stigma. She has the tube that goes down, which is the style, and then that is gonna go down into the ovary. And so I'm gonna try and cut that open so we can see into the ovary. Closer, maybe. You can see the ovary on the inside of this, and that's where the ovules are, and it's kind of two halves to this ovary. Maybe if I tilt inward, you can see a little bit better. And that is the monocot. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you a dicot. I'm going to take all these away. brought a rose with me today also and how do I know it's a dicot well I can see here are some branching veins in the leaf it also has a woody stem and it has these thorns as a protection to it now it also has sepals but these sepals kind of make sense they're green and they protect the flower um, as it's before it's blooming and then we can see the petals would again would attract pollinators so i'm going to go ahead and remove all of these so we can get into the middle it's kind of a shame it's a pretty flower but anyway um, and now roses also have an odor so again another thing that would attract pollinators And pollinators would obviously be things like bees and birds. Now this one you can see has many um, anthers and um, has multiple places for this flower to be um, fertilized. So we have these outside anthers and inside stigma and styles. And again, I can go ahead and cut this open down the middle for us to see the ovary. And I'm gonna tip the plant in, uh, the camera in. And there you go, you see there's lots of these guys to increase the chances of eggs being fertilized so we can get a new flower. And I hope this has been helpful.